Thank you, Jørgen. Um, let me start by uh, thanking uh, the organizers for uh, organizing this uh, very interesting uh, mini school and for inviting me to give a research talk. It's a great pleasure to be here. Um, okay, so in a sense, this is going to be a talk in two parts. We'll be revisiting the invariants we've seen John talk about this morning and Sergei just talked about. So we have a free manifold um, and free. We take uh, G to be SU2. <coughs> and we take a positive uh, level. And then for some notation, so we are going to, as Jan, consider the WRT quantum invariant as a mathematically uh, a rigorous formalization of um, the partition function of quantum transformation theory. So we're going to think of, of this as uh, WRT level R. So this was what Jan denoted by tau R of M3. Um, and on the other hand, we have the invariant that Sergey just talked about this TPPV uh, BPS uh, Q series. So hat of M3 Q, and I'll abuse notation slightly as Jan did and normalize it to be. Uh, power series with integer coefficient, coefficients, which is convergent near zero. In fact, it's convergent on the unit disk. And um, one of the central themes of this talk um, is uh, the radial limit phenomena. So here we have the unit disk where Z hat lives. And then we have these limiting roots of unities theta r e2 pi i over r. Um, and then z hat should be thought of as an analytic continuation of the WRT invariant to the interior of the unit disk via uh, such a formula like this. Uh, Q tends to theta r some over say, spin C structures A and B, some coefficients A, S, A, B, Z hat, B of K. So in the first part, uh, we will give, so since John introduced the WRT invariant, we'll skip that, but we'll give for a certain class of free manifolds a concrete formula uh, for the Z hat invariant, um, resulting in many of the formulas that Sergey just showed us. That's the first part. Um, and then um, the second part in a sense be about a resurgence formula for this invariant for a specific case. So we take our free manifold to be ciphered fibered homology free sphere with n exceptional fibers and then um, we will focus on um, a formula for the Sid Hadden variant which is sent due to myself and, and Jörn um, but it builds on and was inspired by uh, a similar formula in this paper by Gukov, uh, Markus, and uh, Putov 
in the case of n equal to 3. I should not put quotations mark here. Um, so, write q as e2 pi i tau for tau in the upper half plane. Then set hat of this free manifold as a function of tau can be written via an integral formula um, e minus theta over tau. Boral transform of set zero of theta over square root of tau d theta, where set zero is the Utsugi series. So we're going to, we will be focusing on this formula. We will take it as a black black box, and then uh, we will see how this can how this formula can be used to prove this um, analytic continuation conjecture. Series perturbations due to connection. Is it, is it that Tsuki series perturbations due to connection? Yes, okay. yes, exactly. So, and um, moreover, um, we'll see how this formula um, can be used to prove, in a certain sense, quantum. Uh, modularity, and in a certain sense, a resurgence property of z hat. Um, and this is also with Jan and with uh, Han, uh, Li, uh, David, and uh, Zhang Shangshu. So the, yeah, so the first part will be an elementary introduction to set hat for a certain class of free manifolds, and um, we will consider this radial limit phenomena, which was first conjectured, conjectured by uh, Sake, uh, Pei, Putrov, and, and Bafa, if I didn't mention that. And then in the second part, um, the punchline is sort of, we have a resurgence formula for set hat, which can be used to prove this analytic continuation phenomena in this specific uh, case of uh, ciphered fibered free manifolds. And moreover, we'll discuss a little bit of how this resurgence formula um, can be used to establish quantum modularity uh, of that hat. OK. Do I think that it's roughly the middle? So now let's turn our attention to a formula, this TPPB series. So we are going to start with um, a graph. In fact, it will be a tree. Say something like this. It's a weighted graph, so we have a function. Um, W from the set of vertices into uh, the integers, the weights associated to vertices. And from this, one uh, can cook up uh, a free manifold, which is a so-called uh, plump free manifold. Basically, um, the procedure is that this is S3, uh, do, and then you do surgery on the link obtained by um, this graph. And this is just this. You just take every vertex and replace by an unknot, and two vertices which are joined by an edge have linking number one. So it will look, maybe I screwed up the linking numbers, but this one will look something like this.
Okay, but we need some further assumptions on W. So uh, let's, okay, uh, and by W, I mean the following matrix. So of dimension V times V, uh, uh, integer entries. And we assume that it's invertible and it's inverse, it's negative definite. <clears throat> and the entries are given by the weight if we are on the diagonal and it's given by the linking number of the vertices or if you wish uh, associated on knots if we are on the away from the diagonal. So that's the assumption and that's our data. Um, okay, allow me to introduce a little more notation. We introduce delta. This is the degree vector. Um, j equal to one up to high dimension of v. And then we will be uh, implicitly using this identification between um, spin C structures on this free manifold, uh, non canonically identified with. Uh, uh, H1, uh, which is delta <coughs> plus uh, V modulo 2 times W7. Okay, so now we are ready to give uh, the formula. be found in this original paper by uh, these authors. So for A, spin C structure, or homology, or Abelian flat connection, it defines set hat A of M gamma, gamma Q, to be some um, power of Q, simple power of Q. Yeah, we can just write it there. It's the signature of uh, W, I think, uh, plus the trace of W divided by 4 times the principal value of the following integral. Take the product over all vertices, integrate over uh, a variable set V associated to a vertex, numerically equal to 1. V so pi i set v set v minus set v inverse two minus degree of v times uh, theta w of set q where this theta w set comma q is defined as follows. sum over L inside this uh, affine Q raised to the power of uh, minus L transpose W inverse L divided by 4 So that's the formula. What's the first sum under the exponent for q? It's uh, plus trace w. Here? No, 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 upper, up next. Here? Upper line, one more. Go left. It's left. Here. It's just a product. So it's just a q times. No, 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 no. In the here. Exponent. Okay, it's uh, 3 times the signature of oh, w. Signature. Yeah, signature of w plus trace of w oh. divided by 4. Right, so um, this is a formula for a set hat given in terms of um, 
A plumbing graph? Sorry, negative definite signatures. Maybe it's a set of it. This is W is negative. W inverse negative definite. Uh, and what is inverse matrix? Sorry? Uh, I, just, I, I didn't get In, If inverse of matrix is negative definite, it's also negative definite now. Yeah, sure, but the assumption is just that the. Yeah, and then the signature is on the signature 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 yeah. sides, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Many notations from that. You're right. You're right. Um, Sorry, matrix is negative. Definitely, y signature same for. No, French square root eight. Yeah, you can compute the cardinality, but so it, it doesn't really matter too much. So this is just a prefactor which will not be so important for computation. But in principle, yeah. <laughs> because the formula works for the algebra. Yeah. No, yeah. But what is, sorry, what does it say in the summation ring? So L in L A plus two W set V. And A was in the so A, A, A lies in here. It should get like so A, yeah. any A in there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, and it's in the case of a ratio to drive, then there's a theorem, namely that this is an invari topological invariant. So one can alter. So um, we can have different plumbing graphs presenting the same free manifold, of course. And this is controlled by uh, von Neumann moves. And it was proven by Sergei and Tipe Manulescu that this is indeed invariant on the uh, von Neumann moves. So this is a topological invariant. Of M gamma. gamma e. All right. So now to this analytic continuation. Okay, it goes really high. Okay. So in this case, it's now um, a theorem that WRT of R of M of gamma is given by this limit, Q tending to R of unity, sum over A and B is R A B uh, set hat B of Q, where uh, is a B R is given as follows. Uh, e two pi i r linking number of a and a i square root two r times e two pi i linking number. A and B plus E minus 2 pi i thinking number of A and B, all of it divided by WA, WB, numerically, uh, square root of um, H1 in gamma, gamma set, where um, we define W A to be the set two stabilizer of um, of of A, not F, of X. It's fine. So this is equal to, yeah, of course, set two. If A is two torsion and one else. Okay. So this was proven in uh, in this generality stated here, in this general case, uh, recently by uh, Yuya uh, Murakami using some uh, version of Gaussian reciprocity. Mm. Prior to that, with with Jan, we solved the ciphered fiber homology free sphere case. And independently of our work, uh, we solved it using resurgence in, in the way I will I will tell you about in, in the second part. 
Uh, but independently of this, it was also uh, proven uh, in a certain sense by uh, uh, Fuji and uh, Iwaki, you see here? <laughs> Fuji and I I Iwaki and um, uh, another Murakami and uh, Terashima. Um, in the sense that they defined a Q series and showed that uh, such a relation holds. And then um, in correspondence, we found out that the Q series that they had defined was actually the one we had com computed to be set hat. Okay, and, and historically, we should also mention that you know, prior to Sergei touched upon this a, a little bit, prior to definition of set hat, uh, there are related works by uh, Lawrence, uh, Sergei, and also um, Hikami. Okay. So for uh, negative definite plumbings, we have this radial um, um, limit theorem or this analytic continuation. Okay, now to the resurgence part. So let's be precise with our assumptions. So we take P1, Pn, um, co-prime uh, integers. At least um, we need to have three of them. We introduce capital P as the product of the Pj's. And we introduce uh, Pj hat as uh, capital P divided by Pj. <clears throat> and we take our free manifold to be the ciphered fibered homology sphere with um, n exceptional fibers. Okay, and we need to introduce a couple of functions. State some formulas. So let's introduce G of Z. This is equal to product J equal to one to n Z uh, hat PJ minus Z minus PJ hat times Z P minus Z. N. And then we introduce f of y, which is basically the same function, but uh, uh, in, in different coordinates. Uh, n j equal to 1, cinch of y over 2p, j. Um, all of it times cinch of y half uh, to minus n. Okay, and uh, <laughs> one final function, which is b0 of theta, which is uh, theta minus one half times g of exponential of c and square root of theta, where c is uh, square root of 2 pi i p divided by p. Yeah, so g is this rational function given up here. Okay, so uh, our work builds on previous work by Lawrence and Rosansky. which gives a concrete formula for the WRT invariant of this free manifold. 
in terms of uh, these functions, W or T of R. Exponential minus R theta, B zero theta, D theta minus sum M equal to one, two P minus one. The rest you do at Y equal to two pi I M. And then of F of Y times exponential of R I Y squared divided by eight uh, pi P and then the denominator my one minus exponential of minus R Y. And this can be, uh, yeah, this is uh, the first term is of course just the uh, uh, the plus transform r plus of v zero at r inverse, and then this can actually be rewritten. Uh, it's not so hard to see into a sum over some uh, some finite set of uh, faces e two pi i r theta um, so theta of r, where this is a polynomial. So, uh, as Zach also mentioned, we see this interesting behavior where some um, flat connections, um, namely here the trivial flat connection, have an, an honest divergent series attached to it, whereas uh, the reducible ones uh, have polynomials in R. Um, let me mention, so since we will only be working with the issue 2 case, but uh, uh, I think Marcus gave a similar a uh, formula generalized this to higher rank uh, gauge group um, the competition into a Laplace integral plus uh, sum of residues so I'm not going to state it here but in case one in <laughs> if one is interested one could try to take uh, the SUN case use Marcus's formula and uh, play the same game okay so we're building on that formula um, How do I get them down? Let me just take this one. So now you can't see it. There's this pole really. Really. There's a pole here. There's a there pole that is between the two stolpers. Is it a simple pole? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard to get. <laughs> okay. Pick it up in a bit. Okay. Yes, and it should be mentioned, I think I mentioned that in the beginning, that this B0 on the top blackboard is the Boral transform of the Utsugi series. So let's introduce some notation. So turn Simon's C star. Yes. So this B this B zero that you see up there in the Laplace integral, that's the Boral transform of the Utsugi series of, of this free manifold. Okay, so let's introduce some notation for Turn Simon's invariant. So this is the, the range of the Turn Simon's action on the moduli space of irreducible flat uh, SL2C connections. Uh, and um, let's say omega zero are the singularities of the Borel transform of theta. 
Then, um, what we showed with yarn, um, and which was observed, uh, for examples, in n equal to 3 in this GMP paper, was that this set of singularities, as expected from the resurgence um, conjecture stated by Jan uh, earlier today, matches with the Chen Simons invariance. So, even if we consider the SU2 WRT invariant, we see that um, in the way expected from uh, the picard lefschetz and resurgence picture, it actually determines or gives us information about uh, complex chain assignments theory also. All right, and um, implicit in this is, of course, an identification of the broad plane, and I will need notation for the singularities, so let me introduce this here. So, uh, this is the i-axis, and we have some discrete set of singularities, omega zero, uh, indexed by m. Theta m is pi i m squared over 2 times capital P, uh, where M runs through all um, integers where um, M is divisible by, at most, N minus 3 of the PJs. Okay, some more notation. Let's introduce chi m. It's supposed to be chi. A set of integers defined by taking um, the expansion of g So one can, given the definition of G above, one can explicitly compute the chi m's. Okay, and with this notation, we can now state this uh, resurgence uh, formula uh, or uh, refinement of it. Um, so we, of course, use the notation Q equal to e two pi i tau. Then um, set hat. M3 of Q is equal to sum M equal to 0 chi M Q M squared for P. And this is also given by this uh, resummation formula, 1 over square root of tau. E minus theta over tau. Boral transform for Suzuki series, d theta. Okay, and um, the first thing, first thing um, uh, we did to approach this uh, analytic continuation conjecture was to. So if ah, where's this thing? If you can see the formula on the very top of the, for the WRT invariant, you see that there is a Laplace integral, which is very much uh, right here. It's one of the arms. So um, to match them, we apply um, yeah, some version of uh, uh, Cauchy uh, residue theorem to move um, this one across at the cost of picking up a lot of residues. Um, and of course, one has to check that, that then uh, this converges. So one arm 
E minus theta over tau. <coughs> B0 minus pi i sum over uh, theta m in omega, the residue at theta equal to theta m exponential minus theta over tau b0 of theta. So we can write this as 2 over square root of tau and Borel uh, Laplace, beta 0 of tau minus, and then by, de by definition this is r of tau. So, if you compare with the formula above for the WRT invariant, compare that with the bottom formula for z hat, then you see that uh, it's easy to match the two Laplace integrals. The hard part will be to understand um, <coughs> convergence uh, or the expansion of this r of theta defined uh, as the sum of residues. And then match these res the sum of these residues appropriately resumed with the residues we see up there. And that's indeed what we are going to do. Let us compute these residues. Yeah, so again, the idea is to compare this uh, WRT uh, formula as a Laplace uh, plus residues uh, with the formula I just gave, z hat, tau as a Laplace Boral plus this r of tau. Okay, so let's begin with computing the limit. tau tends to 1 over r of r tau. So, by a change of variables, minus theta over tau, um, at theta, theta m. taking um, theta to be y squared over i 8 times p pi, you get that this is the residue at y equal to 2 pi m of f of y <coughs> exponential i y squared over tau 8 p pi. Okay, and then one computes this residue explicitly and gets um, a function which looks as follows. So you have minus, oh, in front of it, exponential minus theta m over tau, and then a sum, j equal to 1, n minus 3, f j m, p j, tau inverse m, where, um, the, and now comes the important part, these f j's, they are periodic functions with period, period, period 2p into c, um, given by 
that uh, they, they, they give the, the principal part of the Laurent expansion of f, this function f, near um, the uh, 2 pi im. So this is sum j equal to 1, n minus 3, f j m, y minus j, plus regular part. Okay? And uh, yeah, and P, Pj is a polynomial. Okay, so this is a crucial point. We um, we take the sum um, of residues, our tau, and we rewrite them uh, so that it will look like a partial theta series with uh, periodic coefficients. That's the main point. And indeed, um, Wait, what was uh, Fjm? Uh, where was it defined? So it's defined by this formula here. So they give you the, the principal part of the Laurent expansion of this function f defined above near uh, 2 pi im. And uh, we, we show, and this will be important uh, in a minute, that they, we have this crucial property that um, when you wait by this uh, e minus theta m r 2p f j m and this is equal to zero. So there's a mean value equal to zero result for all j. Because now we're in a position um, to apply the following lemma of uh, Sagier, which I will write over here. So if you're given a peri periodic function c of period say m, mean value uh, equal to zero and you're given a polynomial and you're given a polynomial q D, X, D, some polynomial. <coughs> then one has an asymptotic expansion of the following series CJ, QJ, um, as T tends to zero. mu equal to zero, d n equal to zero, infinity, q u l minus two n minus u times minus t to the power n divided by n factorial, where l is the l function of um, of c. Okay. Now we can continue the computation and then we're almost done. Basically, continue the these two blackboards actually. Oh, where do I put this here? 
Is it fine? Okay. Okay, perfect. Oh, it is then we just expand exponent in Taylor series and make a divergent sum formally, yeah? Uh, yes, yes, uh, some version of that, but then you need this uh, yeah, this assumption to assume yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. This is, yeah, this is a nice trick explained in uh, Lawrence Sackier, for instance, but I think it's quite uh, standard in. Uh, okay. Now we want to apply this lemma, and then we're basically done. Let's consider asymptotic expansion. So we're considering set hat. That's some radial lim limit. So we write it like this. And we have this formula. And uh, Bras Laplace transform uh, of Utsugi series minus the sum of residues. Now we substitute in the formula we just had, to 1, uh, j equal to 1, n minus 3, e minus theta m over tau, f, j, m, times polynomial, tau inverse of m. And now, as tau tends to, uh, sorry, t tends to zero, then uh, this one you can just uh, substitute in r minus uh, negative, uh, one over r, uh, and then um, using the, um, we, we, can, we apply this lemma now, um, and using the, there's an explicit formula um, for the, um, leading coefficient or the, the, the constant and um, in terms of Bernoulli polynomials and, and uh, using that and some computations one can show that, that we get uh, this residue part of the WRT invariant evaluated at R and then a divergent tail which is indexed by complex chain Simons invariants E 2 pi I R theta, and then a tail here, m equal to 1 uh, theta m r of t m. And um, these things will be polynomial in, uh, in r. And then these two things, of course, go together, and it's the WRT invariant. And then plus again this sum over uh, and Simons invariance. Okay, so that's how uh, the resurgence formula uh, was used to prove uh, analytic continuation for this um, in this particular case. And now let me mention what we're working on with uh, Han Li Shan and Xiang Song Sung, because they, they have this uh, paper where they study a setup which is very similar to ours, namely resurgence of partial theta series <coughs> Q n squared over 2m, where C is a m periodic function, and um, they don't have this assumption all, in all cases, but, but uh, it simplifies the analysis, uh, mean value equal to zero. That's their setup, and uh, one can actually rewrite um, our formula for the Z-hat invariant in this case to sum uh, m 
equals zero. Again, j equal to one up to n minus three, where chi j of m q m squared over four p, where chi j is a two p periodic and of mean value equal to zero. Okay, and using um, this way of rewriting it, which is implicit here, um, yeah, maybe I write it over here. We arrive at the following conclusion. John and Han, D, David, and Shan Song Shu. One thing we can say is that Z hat is a component of a, a vector valued. higher depth quantum modular form. Let's call this part one. And the second thing, um, it actually also, also follows from, from their methods that this expansion I called A is actually resurgent. Let me mention also that this um, part A, uh, part one, sorry, there is some uh, overlap uh, with the works by uh, uh, Catherine Bringman and uh, some of her collaborators. And uh, in these papers, you can also find a, a proper definition of what is a higher depth quantum modular form. And uh, if I remember correctly, they, they attribute the conjecture that it had should be a uh, quantum modular form to, to Sergei in one of their earlier papers. All right, so this is, how, this is what we could use the resurgence formula for, in, for, for Z hat. And let me, uh, let me end with um, giving a final formula for the WRT invariant, a formal formula, which is very reminiscent of a resurgence formula, which follows from the analytic continuation theorem and from this decomposition. Okay, so in this case we get that WRT of R of M3 is equal to, again, this uh, Borel Laplace uh, resummation of the Utsugi series, Borel of set zero, uh, this theta. And then, uh, minus pi i times all the singularities of the Borel transform of the Truki series pick up a residue theta equal at theta equal to theta m of the integrand of this minus r theta uh, b0 of theta. So this, this is a formal formula which should be in interpreted in a suitable sense as this limit. Uh, but nonetheless, it's very much reminiscent of, for instance, the formula that Marcus put on the blackboard with a trans-series completion of this ansatz. Okay, 
I want to end on with that formula. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>